imagine. It's a regular day at your office. You're getting ready for your weekly team meeting. Ah, uh, I was off last week, so I didn't get to read the minutes. I wonder what we're talking about today. I guess I'll find out when I get in there. You go ahead down to your weekly meeting. Wow, there's a division director. Oh my goodness, there's some other really important people for our organization here. So you're looking around and you're like, wow, this is gonna be a really important meeting today. Everybody greets each other and sits down around the conference room table. All of a sudden, your supervisor turns and looks right at you and says, all right, Danielle, are you ready to present the material for today? All of a sudden, you freeze. At that moment, you start to think, oh, I was supposed to present today. I could fight this and blame John and say, oh, he was supposed to present also. It's all his fault that the meeting isn't ready. Um, I can act like I have to leave. Oh, I have to go see a client in about 10 minutes. Um, so I'm not going to be able to present today. <laughs> so that's our reptilian brain telling us fight, flight, freeze. But what else might we be feeling in that moment? Oh, our stomach could start hurting and we feel like we're gonna throw up. Our guts might be turning. We might even pass gas. Our body might start sweating. Oh, oh. Our breath. And all of a sudden we feel like we're drowning. These are all natural and normal responses to fear and a moment of anxiety or anxiousness. Some people even have a panic attack. This is expected. Our brain is wired that way. Why? So that we can be protective of ourselves when there is imminent danger. But is there really imminent danger in our boardroom? At the moment, when our job might be at risk, we might think so. But that's not how we typically feel and how we typically go through the day. So this is Lady D of D. Talford Training Solutions here to educate you on an idea of anxiety and anxiety disorders. As you can see, each and every one of us probably has some kind of anxiety or fear in situations, situations that aren't necessarily a typical situation, but aren't necessarily something that we should hyperventilate over. And for some people, they're going to be fine in that situation, whereas other people are gonna freak out and have a response. So Merriam-Webster Dictionary says that anxiety is a noun, meaning it is a state of being. It's when an abnormal sense of apprehension or fear is often marked by physical signs. It's doubt. And that doubt is concerning a threat and the capacity to cope with that threat. So the experience I talked about in the beginning was a threat like, oh my goodness, I am not prepared for my job and there are important people here to observe me do my job and I don't know if I can cope with this. So when is anxiety and anxiety disorders in children and adolescents a situation where we should be concerned? Well, we've got to think as the adult, we may feel like this sometimes once or twice a month 
a week, a year. But someone with an anxiety disorder feels like the world is out of control most of the time. They feel unsafe. So if you think about early childhood and an early childhood education, me as an early childhood educator, I'm trying to make it fun. I'm trying to make it pleasant. I'm trying to make every experience in a child's life exciting and bright and colorful and wonderful. But is that our real world? It's not. And sometimes as children start to face the harsh realities of a, the real world and understand that not everything is bright and shiny and rosy and fun the way Miss Danielle makes it, but some things are hard and some things are stressful and some things and people are really, really bad. A lot of times when you're four or you're eight or you're 14, Understanding that and dealing with that and learning how to cope with it is very difficult. So let's start out with just what is an anxiety disorder? So it's that extreme fear or worry. So we've gone past the moment of something has occurred and now I am worried or fearful of it. This is where it is a lasting a lot longer, sometimes past six months. And what is it? What, it's a change. So you're gonna see a change in this child. You might see a change in their behavior, their sleeping, their eating, their mood. Now, there are lots of situations in childhood where a child might feel anxious. However, it's that persisting over time that we're concerned about. So let's unpack some ideas around anxiety. So there's general anxiety disorder, separation anxiety, there's selective mutism, specific phobias, there's panic disorder, social anxiety disorder, obsessive compulsive disorder, and post-traumatic stress disorder. So where does anxiety come from? Well, just like with other things, there is a facet of it that's nature. So does anxiety disorder run in my family? Does mental health disorders run in my family? And then there's nurture. What are things and situations that I'm going through? And how have I observed the adults in my life dealing with their own troubles and situations? And as I watch them, do I learn socially appropriate ways to deal with anxious and fearful and stressful situations? Or do I learn that I need to panic anytime a situation is socially um, stressful or anxiety causing. So it plays a lot both ways and both things are interacting together. So some children can have things that run comorbid with anxiety disorder. So these are some of the same things that I've talked about in other videos where comorbidity means that we are coexisting together, that A doesn't cause B, and B doesn't cause A, but A and B are happening at the same time. Some of these things can be in adolescence as extreme as bipolar disorder or schizophrenia. Some of these things can play a, a factor in things like autism. Also, you can think about Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder, ADHD, Attention Deficit Disorder, ADD, Conduct Disorder, CD, or Oppositional Defiant Disorder, ODD, as things that could potentially run comorbid or at the same time as anxiety disorder. So just understanding um, anxiety disorder and what it is can be helpful and, and instrumental in a child's life. So just understand that children need help 
knowing how to navigate the world. They need to understand how things and how to respond socially. So if you think social, that's how I interact with others. And then they need to understand how to react and understand things emotionally. Emotional is my reaction to my interactions with others. So social and emotional development are instrumental in anxiety disorder because if I do not have a good model for how to socially interact and emotionally respond to other people, and I already have that genetic predisposition for being overly fearful of things, then I cannot function in my classroom. I cannot function in my household with the things that you would like me to do each and every day, or I may not be able to function in public. So understanding that anxiety is that extreme fear or worry that even us as adults may get in certain situations when a child is anxious or has an anxiety disorder, it is a very important to seek help for them so that they do not start to have delays in other areas of development. Because if I can't socially interact and emotionally react, then I am not in a state where I can learn new things. I am overly um, my sensory system is overly bogged down and I cannot learn anything. So in order to help children reach their potential, remember, train up a child in the way they should go and when they are old, they will not depart from it. You are the most important person in a child's life. Please like this video, share it with this friend and subscribe to my channel. Also, check out my next video that goes a little more in depth about some of the anxiety disorders that you might see in your classroom or in the children living in your home.